So moving on from the East region, we move to the best region, the West. Um, so we've had a very few, uh, a few very eventful weeks here in the West region, ranging from my home state of Oregon to the AML, one of the most brutal leagues in the country in the state of Texas. Things are growing great for some teams, so uh, let's get right into it. We've, uh, we've had a plethora of league meets and league championships happen here in Oregon, as well as a few non-league qualifying tournaments as well. And uh, we're really starting to see some extreme stratification in our state, with regions in Portland and Southern Oregon leaping quite far ahead of the pack, more so in my opinion than in previous years. Um, so there are three really dominant leagues um, in, uh, or don dominant tournaments uh, in, this, in this region. So um, let's get right into it. Uh, so I'm going to go from chronological order, starting with the SOAR League Championships, the Southern Oregon Area Robotics League Championships, which happened two weeks ago in Roseburg, Oregon. This region has some real historic and or historical Oregon powerhouses in 8372 TNT Trial and Terror and 9851 C4, and this year is no different. These teams have had some very unique designs this season, with C4 having some having a two-arm approach um, that sorts in the intake and deposits simultaneously. So you're going to see them over here. These guys are going to play friendly creator side. So um, you're going to see when their intake comes in, they have a sorting mechanism in that intake, which gives them two separate, uh, gives them two, like it, it splits it. And as you can see right now, they're going to dump. So um, by, by having this, uh, by having the simultaneous dump, they're able to sort and dump quite effectively. Um, team 8372 has a more traditional approach, um, just like we, what we saw with Mechanical Paradox Cubed, um, where they have an intake and a deposit, an angle deposit, double slide system happening separately. So 87, 8372 came on top of the pack and chose their sister team, C4. They both actually work out of the same high school, uh, St. Mary's and Medford. And, um, and Team 12980 Next Gen, going on to win the tournament and set the Oregon high score of 385 points. This match is actually that 385 point match. In addition, C4 took home the gold gold with their Inspire win. Congratulations, teams! So, um, in terms of this, um, what are you guys, uh, what what are you guys are uh, really seeing, uh, uh, in uh, in the way that the game is played? I personally think that this is quite unique in the way that C4 has determined to play this game. But um, have you guys seen anything similar? And if so, where? Um, I think C4 is like um, scoring design is very unique. Most teams I've seen have an extension that goes out. Um, but like the way there's arcs all the way around is very unique. I haven't I haven't seen a robot like that yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a weird robot to me. Um, Absolutely. I, I, that was my first thought, too. But then it worked well. So I was pretty I was pretty pre pleasantly surprised, surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. If it's, if it's weird, I guess it, if it's weird, it's not bad. Uh, if it works, it's good. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, I, I don't know if I like it or not. I'm still trying to decide that as I yeah, watch yeah. it, but it seems effective. It seems quick. I mean, their partner in the back seems pretty effective and quick as well, uh, but mm -hmm. that, is, that is quite a good robot. You it's could probably run that off some, like, really powerful servos, so that would be a mm -hmm. big advantage to that. You could, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's very interesting how um how like angled um TNT's uh, intake box is. It's like all it's basically ninety degrees. I've never seen like a robot that has something like that. I mean, I assume like things would fall out or something, but I guess not. Yeah, I think that was similar to Mechanical Paradox, but I'm not entirely sure. Shishir, I don't know if you can answer this, but do they have a sorting mechanism on that robot? Or do um, they just I have to pick up? I believe TNT is adding a sorting mechanism, but they don't have one currently. I could be mistaken. Um, sorry if I say something wrong, but um, I believe at this tournament they did not. All right, that's that's what it looks like to me. But you're the one that did the research, so I feel like <laughs> yeah. you would know better. All right, yeah. So um, moving on, uh, let's. Uh, so we're gonna move up uh, north to Portland, where we come to the Cedar Mill slash Hillsboro League qualifying tournaments, where 21 teams, three of whom had made it to the World Championships last year, battled it out for the top prize. So we're going to see some more unique designs in this tournament um, uh, and some very, very high scores. <laughs> in fact, um, we had the... We had the um, uh, what's it called? We had the we had technically the world record of 515 points if you count penalties. Um, 160 points of penalties came into play there, so um, not really the high score, but it's it's been a it's been a pretty interesting league. We're seeing some uh, pretty new designs with uh, especially with my team, Team 12808. As you may have seen in our reveal last month, we had a cam-based mineral launcher that can launch particles to the lander height and uh, deposit from there. 
The design worked quite well, and our sister team, Overcharged, um, who's actually in this match right now, implemented it and went on to win the tournament with Team 11089 Bites of Kit Kats and Team 14549 The Fender Benders. Congratulations to all the teams here as well. Can, can I just so, ask um, a question real quick? This this absolutely. overlay that is here seems to be the most intricate overlay uh, that I've seen yet. Is, is this something that uh, you guys as FTC teams that you find beneficial? Is this, is this too much information? And what is the accuracy on this? So, so the, oh, sorry, I mean, I have a score keep, so I feel like I can describe this pretty well. Um, so this is the new live scoring overlay for the field timer and for the stream overlay. Um, so every little thing means something. The So this is during, it's different for autonomous and tele So we'll, I think it is beneficial. Uh, where it becomes more beneficial is in high scoring matches where you can kind of check what's going on with the scores to make sure that it's consistent with what's actually happening. I see that one of the biggest issues in FTC is referees don't always score everything that actually happens. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had similar instances of that, but this year is our first year with a live scoring system in general. So I think we're kind of still figuring out what we like and don't like. Absolutely. It's a complicated year to try to live score and put like nicely. Um, once you, if you have a good understanding of the game, it mostly sort of makes sense-ish. Um, the only thing that confuses me a lot is depots and sampling. I don't really get their decisions on those graphics, but hey. Absolutely. I, uh, so we actually, just for background, we run, we ran this tournament. Um, as, uh, and so we were the ones who sort of were trying to De determine like how, how we were going to run it and we're the first event in the state to actually go with live scoring it has its problems i will i will definitely say that it it is problematic sometimes um it's it it, it, it can be quite annoying especially because some of the graphics aren't intuitive and it, it's um i don't know i'm personally like there, there are limitations um but again it's a learning curve and i think that for what it is it's actually quite quite beneficial and it's quite good um, because it allows the teams, it allows people to have a general idea of what's going on, um, what what the match is shaping up to be before the match results come out. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to see how it works out, and I'm really excited um, to get live scoring to be the primary scoring method. Because currently in this league, we actually had to we did the live scoring, but we also did paper scoring at the end. So um, we did they did go and go in and count the minerals, which is something that they were veering away from, but it's something that was necessary right now. Um, to be, be, uh, to make sure that scores were accurate. Uh, I'd say that this so, would be the most beneficial when that, that aspect of it goes away and we're just getting live scores right after the match. So Shishir, I want to go back to something you said a moment ago. Um, you said that the refs are going in and counting at the end of every match. Mm -hmm. You could actually, if you were watching the match playing, you could have seen them just going in at the very end, yeah. So that's interesting. And I'm always curious at how regions are doing this because... I'm pretty sure per the game, it's either per the game manual or the ref manual, not sure. Um, there's somewhere where refs have been told that you're actually not supposed to, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to actually okay. count, and the score is the score at T minus zero. Have you guys exactly. heard that as well? Exactly. I've heard that as well. And uh, I believe it was an executive decision by Ortop to um, go in right now and do that, um, which is something that I found pretty surprising. Um, and I, of course, I'm not like a member of Ortop, so I might be wrong. Um, I might be I might be incorrect, and they're actually not supposed to count. They they weren't counting, and if so, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that's what I've heard as well. And I was surprised that the referees were doing this. But I think that it's good right now to have that stage of uh, double checking. I agree. I just hope they don't do it at Worlds, or it's going to take forever. Oh yeah. Um, so these comments we have ones from K West three six two. This person said it is definitely helpful for refs. It's accurate if the live scoring refs get it right and are quick. And then uh, there was a response from Blue Rhapsody that say, I'd say the opposite. Actually, live scoring is a major oof. And if they miscount them, sometimes they don't even recount after. Mm -hmm. um, and as we were just talking about, that no recount is due to the game manual, which says no counting. Um, so it's not consistent among regions. All right, what happened at the Tiger League qualifier, Mr. Shishir? All right, so um, finally, the last, the third major Oregon event was the Tiger League qualifier. Um, here we also had a few uh, Oregon heavy headers, including Team 9089-49, the Gifted Gears, 8610, Tober Tech, 
7776 the loose screws and 10565 system online um tober and gifted came together in the eliminations with team 6712 newberg robotics to win the event in addition tober tech co took home that gold gold again as the winning alliance captain and inspire award winner so congratulations to these teams um uh, let's uh, now uh, we're gonna move down. We're gonna move down the uh, the Pacific to California. In California, we had a very eventful month of qualifiers. NorCal is um, is quite unique in terms of region in the sense that they have many qualifiers, but each one only advances one to two teams. As such, even winning the robot game as a captain is oftentimes not enough uh, to advance. Nevertheless, we saw a good sewing, showing at the Folsom Intel qualifier uh, where teams 13216 and 13217 held a brief California high score of 361 points. These two teams, with their rather close numbers, uh, I'm actually not sure if they're sister teams or not, maybe the chat can help us out, formed the alliance that won the tournament. However, unsatisfied with their score, this alliance went on to break it with a score of 379 points in subsequent matches, which is the current California record. In addition, Team 13217 advanced to the winning of the Inspire Award. Um, I want to give a quick reminder. This is this is the time for me to remind our audience that we love to see viewer input of our content. If you want your event discussed on air, be sure to send us your footage. Um, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash funftc. And this really allows us to talk about your event and uh, understand the intricacies in a lot more detail. So um, help us out, guys. You can um, also send us stuff on Discord as well. Uh, that, oh, yeah. uh, that Discord was just thrown into the chat. Absolutely, absolutely. This will really allow us to understand what the robots are looking like, how it's going to be, and how you're how how the matches are playing out in your region. So now, um, moving down, uh, moving down the coast to Southern California, SoCal has had a few uh, has had many events in this past few months, but again, we weren't able to find too much match footage for it. Um, but uh, of course, powerhouse team forty two sixteen Rise of Hephaestus rose <laughs> above the competition <laughs> with a score of three hundred and sixty in their Design Thirty Nine League Meet Two. Now. Um, uh, moving away from the West Coast, we are going to take a brief stop at Montana. Um, the stomping grounds of three-time world champion ch ch champions 724 Redneck Robotics won. This season is no different than uh, any other older one, with them taking home a slot to the, to, to the Houston Championship as the winning alliance captain of the state. Congratulations to their alliance partners 9112 uh, and 54. In addition, congratulations to Team 4133 Fusion for taking home the other Houston slot with the Inspire Award. And Shishir, um, <laughs> if I am remembering this correctly, Redneck Robotics has a pretty new team similar to the Brainstormers, right? That's right. That's right. Um, I believe it was our interview where we uh, where we learned that Redneck, uh, uh, the majority of the team had graduated, and but they um, so they've had they've taken I believe a, a, a fresh set of me uh, members, and they're doing quite successfully with them. So I'm really glad to see them thrive. It would be quite fun to see them go back to back. See them get that fourth championship. <laughs> Absolutely, I'd love to we'll see, see that. in a few months. Does that's anyone right. know how their coach is doing? Did he was uh, involved in an accident earlier last year, right? That's right. That's right. I believe Mr. Mergia is doing well. I've uh, I've only seen I haven't really seen any bad things on Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. So um, again, thank you so much. The FTC community really rallied around the team and rallied around Mr. Mergia um, in his time of need. So really good job, and uh, we're really gr grateful that he's um, he's back and he's strong. So um, thank good. you for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, now we're gonna move on to Colorado. There have been two very dominant teams in this region, with Team 11260 and 9899. 11260 Upper uh, Creek Robotics has really found their footing this year. Living under the massive success shadow of their successful FRC program, Team 1619 <laughs> Upper Creek Robotics, isn't easy, but they have been making waves with their unique drivetrain and formal world record with the other major player in this state, 9899 Black Diamond Robotics, finalist alliance of the Houston World Championship, uh, well, division finalist of the Houston World Championship last year. In addition, this team has been living up to their namesake's amazing video production quality, putting out a very beautiful robot reveal and event recap. So um, if you have a chance, do check out their YouTube channel to see some really high-quality footage. Let's, uh, let's check out this recap for a little bit. Yeah, let's, let's check it out. Um, I personally loved it. Um, uh, I think that, I, 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 I don't know, I just, I, just, I, I appreciate the style. 
that uh, Upper Creek puts into their uh, uh, that they put into their videography, their AV, and uh, I think that this is no different. Yeah, I believe this is a separate guy. So this is a mentor of their FTC team who did this video. So it's oh. cool to see um, like their program grow into more videographers and not just have that awesome style in one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Absolutely. Yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, I, I'm a, I have a question I just thought of. Can you show it judges a video during your judges presentation? Yes, you can. The winners of the 2016 World Championship Inspire Award, I believe, uh, Hotwired, they did have a video that they would show about their CAD and their parametric and stuff. Because I feel like the, uh, really some, a really cool video about your team, like something like this would be cool for a judging interview. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I've never thought about that. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Presentation, uh, in, ter in terms of the judging presentation, you're allowed to have a var variety of media formats, and it can be quite useful. It can be quite quite effective if you use it right. But then again, if you are showing things that the judges don't really want to see, you are wasting your 10 minutes. Yeah, of course. I, mm -hmm. I love Upper Creek's drivetrain, but it's, all, it's really weird. Um, <laughs> it's like I a rocker bogey, but all has it's weird. <laughs> the first time I saw this was with Plasma Robotics, I think 2403 FRC team in um, uh, Stronghold, um, mm -hmm. where, which they used to get over the uh, like all the uh, obstacles of that year's challenge. Um, and I think that um, see this team is different in that because these guys are using two, um, uh, I mean four wheels. So uh, Plasma only used three, but um, I think that it's it's still quite effective. Instead of having an entire intake that would take up weight and stuff. These guys are able to effectively keep it in their robot and um, um, move without too much issue um, every match. All right. So um, we're going to move on. So another major player in Colorado is uh, obviously Team 6929 Data Force, winners of the 2017 St. Louis World Championship, um, division finalists of last year's Houston World Championship, really an all-around great team. And these guys have won two tournaments and the Inspire Award in New Mexico. So they haven't been competing in their state, um, but they've been competing in New Mexico. For unfortunately, we haven't been able to find any videos of them. Finally, we're going to round out this region with none other than the Lone Star State. In our last recap of the fierce Austin Metro League, we were about to have a league meet, and now they've had it, and it's impressive. Combining all four divisions, we see Team 88-86 Sabre come out top with a perfect RP of 20. Of the famed Viperbot clan, we see none other than Viperbot Hydra, finalist of last year's Houston World Championship, taking the second overall slot. We round out that top three with Team 3708 Iron Eagles Optimus, this league qualifier event is going to be extremely competitive, and I can't wait to see how it plays out. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.